EU lawmakers are moving closer to passing new rules to regulate artificial intelligence tools, including chat GBT. This week, they voted for tougher draft legislation. The Bloc's AI Act could be the world's first comprehensive legislation to regulate this new technology, including rules over facial recognition and biometric surveillance. As part of the proposal, AI tools will be classified according to their perceived level of risk from low to unacceptable. Sarah Chandler is a senior policy advisor at European Digital Rights, and she joins me now from Belgrade. Thanks so much for being here with us. And it's interesting to, uh, to, to get a look at what Europe is doing because it could uh, influence what's happening here in the U.S. So just looking at the list of, of measures um, that they're taking, what are the two of the most important ones, do you think? I, I mean, certainly I highlighted one of them banning uh, using biometric ID in public. So what else caught your eye? Yeah, definitely. So also what we have to look at in terms of the EU legislation is there's a whole list of prohibited technologies about what is considered unacceptable. In addition to facial recognition, we've also seen predictive policing bans. So the idea that you, uh, AI systems can predict where or by whom crime will happen before it's actually happened, that is banned under the, the, the new EU AI Act and, and will be continue to be debated. Another thing that is a really big uh, win for civil society is um, increased transparency and accountability measures on high-risk technology. Now, what that means is that if a government or if a company is seeking to deploy a, a system classified as high-risk, for example, AI systems used to make decisions about welfare or access to jobs, for example, uh, the deployer of that system, the, the, the company or the government using that system will have to declare public information about using that system and also show that how it would mitigate the potential human rights impacts. Yeah. And, and predictive policing that you mentioned there is something that's been a, a hot button topic here in the U.S. and it's certainly being used uh, extensively in, in some cities. So what, what are two of the most uh, important misses here, do you think? What, what wasn't included that you think should have been? Definitely. So we've been looking into the uses of AI at the border. Um, particularly trying to predict where illegal migration is happening um, and also discriminatory risk profiles of migrants. We think that AI used at the, in these technology in these contexts should be prohibited as well. And that's uh, particularly uh, crucial for preserving the right to asylum um, and general rights of migrants. And that was not included in the list of prohibitions. Yeah, another uh, flaw... And another flaw is uh, the need for more accessibility requirements for people with disabilities. Many AI systems are increasingly used, and yet um, developers have not always have um, taken the right steps to ensure that everybody can use these systems, um, yeah. including people with disabilities. And, and what about chat GPT? I mean, that's certainly is something that's been in the, in the headlines a lot here, uh, raised a lot of eyebrows as people sort of uh, come to terms with, what, what the, with their capabilities. How would chatbots be regulated? So chatbots are regulated in two particular ways. Number one, uh, the, the draft legislation would require you to be informed if you're interacting with a chatbot, which is already important, uh, an important um, measure against disinformation or people being tricked into thinking that they are speaking to a human. So that's one step. But also the legislation seeks to try to address the underlying issues with big, large language models under, underlying ChatGPT. Now there, there are massive environmental impacts when you develop those systems, but also there are um, labor exploitation issues. What this legislation seeks to do is require big companies like OpenAI or like Google, for example, who are developing those systems to disclose more information exactly about the level of compute needed, which is a massive issue. Um, and that's a, a bit more of an underlying issue that is often ignored in the conversation about chat GPT. Yeah, it's not something I've, I've ever thought about uh, in all of the, the implications here. Now, in terms of the companies um, that, that, you know, if they were to break the rules, it seems as though the punishment would be more than just a, a slap on the wrist, right? Definitely. So for some of, the, some of the requirements in the legislation, there is a fine that could actually, actually potentially go up into the millions. So there's potential um, real accountability that is at stake here. But that depends on how the final piece of legislation is negotiated, which will probably happen at the end of this year.
Yeah. Now, before we go, I want to ask you this because this is this is vital here for for the U.S. I mean, the EU isn't a, a, a huge developer of, of uh, AI technology, but certainly what what happens in Europe often um, you know tra uh, gets passed down to to the U.S. Where you know things like uh, uh, privacy issues uh, online and so on. Uh, what's happened in Europe has affected what's happened uh, here in in America and in Canada and elsewhere. So, how do you think that what is happening in Europe might might trickle down and we might see uh, some of that regulation be replicated elsewhere. Yeah, definitely. We call it the Brussels effect. So legislation passed in uh, in the EU definitely gets passed on to across the world. I think the main message for the US is really to look toward the EU and in terms of the human rights centered um, approach that the European Parliament is trying to take. It's looking at issues like racial discrimination, it's looking at issues like migrants' rights, and all of these things are often underlooked in the question about technology development. I think that's a really big um, learning and message I would take to US regulators. Mm. If they are looking to look at uh, regulating technology, it's not just all about the profits that can be made, it's about the people too. Excellent point. We'll have to leave it there, but really appreciate getting your insights on this. Sarah Chander, Senior Policy Advisor at European Digital Rights. Appreciate it.